Our sports car architecture is elemental to the existence of Lotus and contains our famed DNA from our sports car history. We do this through a mid-mounted engine and a lightweight aluminium structure. It's completely evolved to give Lotus its first new car for 2021, an all new sports car codenamed Type 131. As well as the car being all new, we have a dedicated all new production facility and today we're building our first prototype vehicles as they come off the line. Let's take a look. Type 131 bridges our past and our future and today we're really excited that we can announce the name of the car. We're now going to go over to our studio to meet our design director, Russell Carr, to give us an overview of Amira's design language. I think what we've learned from designing the Avaya really is we formed our views of what the new design language is. And obviously we'll adapt that for Amira and all the other cars that come up in the future in the most appropriate way, basically. So some of the things which are really key is getting the proportions right. We want the cabin hunkered down between the wheel arches so you get these really muscular haunches on the vehicle, almost like the shoulders on a big cat, something like that. So the car's really planted on the road. We want to have very soft, fluid surface language with some really crisp lines on the surface as well so that you've got this juxtaposition of the soft and hard. And we want everything to be really shrink wrapped around the mechanicals as well because our cars are all about the driving experience, agility, etc. And we want to express that in the form. So we want something that looks very athletic and agile. And of course, aerodynamics is really important to us as well. So we've obviously interpreted the car by air aerodynamic philosophies of Evaya, but done it in an appropriate way for a car that's in the class that the Emirate is in. Technology in the design process is really important. We, we sort of combine very classical uh, techniques like hand modelling clay together with very modern techniques. So we also machine clay using five axis milling machines. But of course we've got computer technology, we use VR and we use full screen projection as well. So part of the process that's, that you'll see around the studio is that we'll be designing the car on the computer, we'll be viewing it on a large format screen, four metres inside, we'll be immersing ourselves into virtual reality as well. And really ha having all those different tools just really helps us. It helps improve the quality of the car because we can get into looking at the assembly of panels, looking at all the gaps, all the see-through conditions to make sure all that looks perfect and is really good quality but it also allows us to see things very early on that perhaps we wouldn't have done in the past with just using a clay model. So for example, on the interior, we can go into a VR world, we can make ourselves look ridiculous putting the headset on, but with a computer model then, you can believe that you're inside a real vehicle. We sit inside our seating buck we have, we put the headset on, and we can look over our shoulder and see what obscuration we've got on the C pillar. We can see where the pillar sits, we can imagine reaching out and touching the surfaces of the, the instrument panel. 
So we do that all in combination with the physical model, but at the start of the process, that's really important. And then the digital phase remains all the way through to us releasing the final data. And we, we tune that data to get perfect highlights on it, perfect gapping, make sure, as I say, there's no gaps where you can look through and see something you wouldn't, wouldn't want to do. And of course, this technology of using the digital format has been really useful during sort of lockdown, during the COVID crisis. We've been able to do a lot of work from home, which would be impossible with a clay model because it's not very easy to take a clay model home. But we're able to be spread around the country, all communicating, uh, you know, uh, electronically, looking at all these surfaces and details. So it's really kept us moving. It's kept the quality improving on the car and it's kept the creative opportunities going because we can try many more things using digital technology. What we set out to do is we're always trying to do something that is thrilling. We are all about performance, so the product has to thrill you, has to excite you. No one buys a sports car for, for rational reasons. They have to be seduced into buying it through the, the, the emotion of the product. We want the product to be beautiful as well. We want something that stays attractive in the market for a long period of time. So it's got to be beautiful and glamorous as well. It has to be ingenious. We have to try new things in there adapt technologies in a, in a new manner because we're all about looking forward. It has to be memorable as well. Um, there's lots of great vehicles out there, so we have to find things that are distinctive. So for example, on the back of the Avaya, the way that we, we do the rear lights, uh, the, the Venturi tunnels, the way they exit the vehicle, you know, that's something that people remember and it's something to talk about. Um, and then at the end of it as well, you know, it has to also be recognisable as a Lotus. So that's, that's how we think when, we, when we're doing a design language. Thanks, Emma and Russell. We can't wait to share more on Amira. I will today give you some more details on the powertrain. Contrary to some speculation, we are not going down the hybrid route. Instead, we're developing a new partnership which will give us a new powertrain offering. It will be highly efficient, use cutting edge technology and of course, have a high performance output. But for now, you will have to wait for more details. We will be sharing a mirror with the world on the 6th of July, making its world debut from our all new manufacturing facility here at Hethel. The reveal will be followed by a public dynamic debut at the world famous Goodwood Festival of Speed on the 8th of July. <laughs>
be it through AI or machine learning, the opportunities there are great, but we'll be developing them with every new model, you'll see new levels of technology in the cars. So the government is talking about Global Britain and we, we want to be part of that. We think we can be leaders in that as well at Lotus. Um, we like to think of ourselves as Global Tech Britain. So the offerings of technology on the vehicles and uh, the developments that we're doing are also available to our customers through Lotus Engineering. So as a, as a group, we can develop new technologies and uh, grow together. The investment in Lotus has been large um, and we're talking about billions we're not talking about hundreds of millions and that investment in product to give us the technology the architectures but also the facilities that we need for the growth we have planned is why we've had to invest that much so the investment plans are in place the product plans in place and we have the budgets in place for growing the technology growing the new products Obviously we need to get to a point where we're self-sustaining, so as we can grow our revenues, volumes and sales, that will just lead to more products coming from Lotus. Lotus uh, has a global technology strategy, and the reason it's global is that we want to make sure we've got the efficiencies of working with Geely and our sister companies as well. So the technology roadmap that we have in place is defined by legislation, but it's also about customer demands and the challenge is always how quickly we can get new technology onto new vehicles. Our technology roadmap is very strong and sets us on a, an exciting course for the future. Uh, we have an acronym that we use that defines what we're going to do, which is ESIP, which is Electrify, Amplify, Simplify, Intensify and Personify. So Electrify defines where we're going with our strategy in the future, as has been defined by Avaya. We will be a fully electric vehicle company uh, in the late 2020s. Before then we have one last hurrah with Type 131 with a combustion engine, but all of our technology roadmap is leading us towards an electric future. Amplify for us is to really turn up the technology and the products. Each new product that comes along in the future will include more technology, and as you see with the new products coming through, the technology will just be amplified that much more so it becomes part of our DNA. Technology will be simplified. If it's not simple, it's not a Lotus. But the technology will be there for the driver and to enhance the ownership experience. Technology will be there as an aid to the driver and it will always be simple because we don't want to overcomplicate our Lotus. With every new launch, the role of technology will be intensified at Lotus. This work is being led by a global consultancy, Lotus Engineering. Lotus Engineering is gaining experience and reputation for technology areas including HMI, UI and UX. This is added to our specialities around driver engagement, ride and handling, aerodynamics and so much more. P is for personify. Technology is a luxury as it creates opportunities. It gives us massive scope to personalise our products and our customer experience to give them life and identity. For Lotus, the future is what a product can do. Customised through technology, to adapt to our customers' preferences and goals. Sustainability is not just about the environment and our corporate social responsibility, even though that is hugely important to us. We're at a pivot point, moving towards an electrified product range after Type 131. This journey to net zero is well underway as we're working with our energy partner, Centrica. Sustainability for us is also in a business context. Lotus, in its 73-year history, has produced over 100,000 cars. 75% of those are still in existence, so we have a sustainable product. Sustainability as a business has been a little bit more difficult to achieve. What we need to do is have a business that will last for a long time, hopefully forever, and to achieve this sustainability, we need to have health and stability. In the 2020s, the Lotus business has health, stability and sustainability that will allow us to achieve our three key priorities as part of the Vision 80 strategy. These are transforming our business, revolutionising our product range and delivering results every year. We are delivering these three key pillars based on a robust strategy, a hugely talented team, a multifaceted brand which includes Lotus Engineering and with very strong backing from our shareholders, Etika and Julie. 
let's take a look in a little bit more detail how we are achieving this. As you can see, we're rapidly expanding beyond our spiritual home, Hethel in Norfolk. This is the home of our legendary racetrack, of sports cars, and will remain the soul of the brand. This is what the Vision 80 journey is about. There are four key epochs that are highlighted here. 2018, where the journey began on Lotus's 70th birthday. This brought a new air of optimism and confidence across the whole business. We increased our volumes. We increased the headcount with the backing of our shareholders. And then we broke through the operational break-even barrier in 2019. 2021, where we are today. It's the end of one era, but the beginning of a new one. The new design language, as heralded on Avaya, is percolating throughout the brand. You will see this on the new sports car that we launch in the summer. 2025, a whole new lineup of cars from Lotus. Starting the year with a new sports car, we can't wait to share with you the generation of modern, leading tech, premium performance cars from Lotus. Watch this space. 2028, taking Lotus into its ninth decade with a completely transformed business. A global business with an entirely new and world-beating range of products. And having reached our target results of exponential growth in volumes, headcount, revenue and profits, our 80th birthday will be a real celebration to look forward to and you're all invited. Now let's take a look at Lotus's new map of the world. Hethel, the home and soul of the brand, our advanced performance centre and base of the Lotus executive team. Wellsbourne, home of the Lotus Advanced Technology Centre and Lotus Engineering. Gothenburg, the global centre of Geely Design, led by Peter Horbury. Frankfurt, the European Centre of Geely Technology, GATD, led by Max Ray. China, the home of Geely and the world's leading market in vehicle electrification. USA, the largest sports car market in the world with two strategic hubs for Lotus, including Detroit and LA. You know, it's been designed without any constraints, you know, for time, for budgets, you know, and we've, we've pushed the boundaries on having the, absolutely the, the technically best partners on the planet, and we've pushed them even further than what they do, you know, so we've got technology in this car, which is, you know, it, you'd only see in Formula One in a moment, and that's not something you can buy and apply. The best way to describe it is the, the 50 yard feel. So every Lotus, when you get into it, you drive it for the first 50 yards and you immediately feel connected to it. You feel part of the car. It responds exactly how you want it to. Um, and that's the real key and the real selling point from a Lotus point of view. Evia is an amazing experience to drive. It's uh, obviously all Lotus cars are brilliant, but Evia just takes it up to the next level. We're on target to exceed what we've quoted before. You know, so we should be up and over 2,000 horsepower. We're currently working really hard ourselves and with our, our supply partners to maximise the performance envelope of the car, and that's both from a power and a torque. You know, we're confident we're going to exceed our torque capacity, um, and uh, the weight and the performance of the car, we're, we're far in excess of where we thought it would be, particularly around our track here. You know, we're going to be the fastest ever road car, um, and even uh, approaching some of the, the historical F1 cars that have been around our track. So the, the thing's going to be a real weapon. The Avaya to drive is phenomenal, but it is Formula One accelerations in a closed cockpit, so it's like a little Group C racer, but with the, the torque and the instant delivery of all of the power, all the torque, and using the very latest toolbox of electronic aids, that you start to believe that you can defy physics. You look at a corner, we have some corners on the circuit here, and you approach them at well north of 130, 140 miles per hour and just send it straight through it. But also the complexes where it's 80, 90 miles per hour, you get to the apex of the curve. And normally the combustion engine, there's a slight delay or it's just rear wheel drive. But the Avaya actually just fires you out like a catapult. You just feel the drive from all four wheels and it just sends you up the road. And then you get the confidence with the aerodynamics and the brakes that you're just waiting to hit the brakes and go around the next corner. So it just puts you into a new level of driving. There's no car in the world that has this technology. This is a real tour de force, you know, from the, the world's most power dense battery, the world's most power dense e axle package. Um, and that's part and parcel of making a real Lotus a performance car, a lightweight car, but 
differing from previous cars, we've much uh, we've designed the cockpit and the environment to be much more immersive for the driver. You know, so all the connectivity, it's all intuitively laid out. We've got haptic controls which we haven't had before in a Lotus car, and we've got a full cloud connected server. So we know that the, the offboard telemetry of the car pretty much live anywhere in the world. That helps us support the customer. The customer can also see the, the telemetry of the car in the app, and then use the items like what three words to help pinpoint the location if they have an issue. Lotus is built on the pillars of dynamics, powertrain, and lightweight. Um, and Via just takes all of those to the absolute extreme to be the most Lotus vehicle that we've ever produced. We have um, some amazing new products coming our way, um, incredible new levels of technology, stunning products to look at. And of course, this will bring a whole host of new customers to the brand. And uh, we need to create the right environment and uh, demonstrate to our customers the best possible experience in both inquiry in terms of buying the product, in, in owning the product, and, uh, and that needs from our side um, a huge amount of change. The industry is changing anyway. A lot has happened in the last 12 months which has moved mountains in terms of the way in which car companies and, and car retailers are doing business with their customers. Um, and we're no exception to that and we will be uh, no exception to that. The physical experience of buying such a thing as a car is extremely important and always will be. It's well documented that uh, you need to see, you need to feel, you need to touch. And buying a car online is, is a process, uh, but it's not something that that many people actually do. So a brand showcase will always be something that we will advocate. We know that we have to do business with customers in a different way over time and we are looking very closely and will implement uh, much more of a direct transactional model. That links also to the technology that's coming in our vehicles, so a direct relationship with the car and a direct relationship with the, with the owner of the car and a direct relationship that the owner has with the car digitally as well um, it, it is key for, a, for the right kind of experience. That gives you so much more data that you can use, of course. So in terms of planning, in terms of forecasting, in terms of actually targeted marketing, um, the data that you can get from that direct relationship gives you the ability to be absolutely bang on and far more accurate than the industry and, the, and, and we as a company are today. So, yep, the, the use of data is, is absolutely paramount. We're sat in the, uh, the new uh, retail design studio at Hethel. We've just recently uh, built this. Uh, purpose being is that we can show off our new retail identity concept to our current retail partners across the globe and uh, all of our future potential investors into the retail brand as well. So we're looking forward obviously to inviting um, a number of people over uh, the next few months as we're allowed to travel uh, to this environment. The retail um, identity concept is, is really designed um, as being future-proof, um, aligning itself obviously to the new retail experience that we're trying to create uh, for our customers of today and the future. And it's very much aligned to, to um, the Vision 80 objectives. It's a concept that, that can be adapted into a standalone showroom environment, uh, a shopping mall, boutique environment, combined sales and service uh, facility, a large brand center. We can pretty much work with any space that one of our retail partners of today or the future gives us to work with. The concept has also been designed to be able to adapt into all those spaces, but also adapt to the different markets obviously that we are represented in, um, cultural nuances obviously that sit within those markets, the different uh, levels of uh, consumer behaviour that might be there. And we're also working towards now, um, from what you see today, is a digital store adaption as well, which we hope to roll out into some major cities uh, over the next couple of years. The concept, as I said, is, is, is very flexible, it's adaptable, it's component-based. Being component-based, it, it, it's about you know, working with a space inside outwards. Um, so you know, what you see today, um, elements of this can go into pretty much any environment. And it's aligned itself, obviously, to three key areas um, of the customer journey. Um, so as the industry moves more towards um, online sales, 
and that digital experience. We firmly believe that our physical locations still have a place to play because of the brand that we are uh, today and have been in the past. You know, we've got a lot of heritage that we want to leverage and, and, and utilise and, and we don't want to lose that. Simply the car there on its own, showing the product for what it is, which is a fantastic product range that we have today and all of, of our future products that are coming, particularly obviously as connected car and the technologies and EV technologies coming in the future and how we can adapt that. Um, and creating technology environment around that car that can push information out to, uh, to a, a, a consumer's uh, device in a modern way. Um, again, linking it back to that digital journey. So there's always a, um, a data record for us of, of where that customer might have engaged, not only with the brand, but also with the product as well. The forum is the second area that we've created. Um, Clearly we're trying to create that forum online where you know, customers can engage, they can do their research, um, they can search for the car, they can um, evaluate their financial attributes as to affordability, uh, they can even configure a car. But you know, a lot of customers still want to engage with that human being um, and at that point they may want to drop the journey and come into an environment. So we've created the forum where um, they can engage with the human being and, and take the journey to the next stage. And we're, even if that's just simply book, booking a test drive or just you know, uh, obtaining a bit more information on the product um, and availability, for example. The third area that we've created is the curated space where, again, you know, it's an area where uh, consumers can engage through technology, uh, through a digital experience, through graphics, through merchandise and learn more about the brand and engage and it's also an area that we can bring our brand partners alive um, and allow customers to engage with that. Um, you know, as a brand, you know, we're 73 years old, we've got a lot of heritage and we don't want to lose that. And that, the curated space gives us the ability for our consumers to, to learn more about what we're about and where we're going in the future as well. So as you can see, the three areas within the retail identity concept uh, enable us to bring both the online and physical journeys together in a seamless, engaging way. If you think about your daily life, um, we do all sorts of things that we take for granted today that were very different before. And the analogy that, that we like to use is that of banking, where some years ago now, but whenever you wanted to do business with the bank, it was at the bank, on the bank's terms. Well, today, of course, as we all know, you can do that you know, 24 hours a day, any day of the year, wherever you want that to be. And actually, the business and the process of buying a car and inquiring about a car should be no different, yeah? And it's a combination of looking, feeling, seeing, interacting, at the same time having the ability to inquire and maybe even conclude the transaction, either online or offline but as a position in the future in terms of how a customer interfaces with, with Lotus, um, it will be multi-channel and we're very clear in that direction. One of the um, things that you have to consider for the future is actually the different kind of models of ownership. And different people will want to own cars or, or possess cars in a variety of different ways. We're not really talking about a new system we're actually talking about taking one single way of, of, of working, behaving and transacting today and simply building on that with layers of choice, hence the multi-channel term. The relationship with the brand, the relationship with the retailer remains the same and it's also well documented that Personal relationships in that transaction are also very important. People like who they buy from, yeah? and we're all the same. This is really important because it is you know, the front face of the brand to any of our customers, wherever they are, it's the, it's the first point of call. And it's important that we start the process of making that much more consistent. And, uh, and a Lotus experience is starting to be the same wherever it is you are around the world.